You know there's a fourth movie, right? Um, uh, Mark, there's a fourth Wimpy Kid movie. You're forgetting one. Mark, are you purposefully leaving out the fourth Wimpy Kid movie? Why do you movie? not want to talk about the other Mark, Diary talk of about Wimpy Diary Kid of movie? You know, there the is a hall. fourth Didn't you know Wimpy it won, Kid like, movie, a ton right? of Oscars or something Mark, like that? Mark, do you like your grandparents? All right, I get it. You want me to talk about the long haul? Okay, I'll talk about the long haul. The Long Haul is about an American ex-serviceman leaving Allied-occupied Germany after World War II, and is persuaded by his English wife to settle in Liverpool, looking for what. Fine. Okay. This film. You cannot fathom the pure distaste I possess for this disgusting excuse for entertainment. You couldn't just leave it alone, Fox. You cap off the trilogy with a perfect, satisfying conclusion, and then you go and give me this. Well, all right then. I think it's time to completely annihilate. Uh, I, I mean, give a fair review of the fourth film in the Diary of a Wimpy Kid franchise, Diary of a Wimpy Kid: The Long Haul. Now everyone knows the original trilogy. They're classics. They had fun scenarios recreated from the popular book series by author Jeff Kenney, had great comedy built off the relatable predicaments the characters got themselves in, and had a stellar cast who perfectly translated the simple stick figures into the real world. Then they had to go and fuck it up. There was absolutely no indication of anyone even wanting to make a fourth film. Every interview for years stated that a fourth movie would not be coming out, and Kenny would much rather have an animated adaptation, most likely so they can keep the characters timeless, since the main reasoning behind the cast's replacement and a fourth one not being made was due to them getting older. Oh, really? But we're getting kind of old, so like we don't really know at this point whether we keep going or not. I genuinely have no idea as to why this movie was made. I joked about them being hits in my trilogy video, but they didn't perform that well financially to warrant a reboot only half a decade after the series ended. But I guess those sweet, sweet book sales were more than enough reason for Fox to want to take another stab at recapturing what made the novels so entertaining in film form. But you know what they said, it's hard to capture lightning in a bottle twice. So let's take a look into the hopefully final film. Now the thing I loved about the original trilogy is how grounded they were in reality. It starred the dysfunctional Heffley family, the parents Frank and Susan, with their three kids Roderick, Greg and Manny, going through real struggles and trying to get along, and just be better people in general. And the stories of each of these films perfectly complemented that. One of my favourite things about them is how grounded in reality they were, so the focus can always be on the characters. The first movie, two friends slowly realise they're growing apart after entering middle school. The second, a boy and his brother desperately try to get along with each other. And the third, a boy tries to accomplish all his personal goals for the summer, while at the same time trying to make his dad proud of him. It's simple, but it's all that they needed to be. So now we have the fourth film, where a boy and his family go on a wacky road trip to get to grandma's house, where they run into comical set piece after comical set piece. They encounter a crazy family who tries to steal all their stuff, win a pig at a carnival, and have to use a boat on land to get to their destination. What shenanigans will the Heffley family get to in this scene? Way too much. A story about the Hefleys going on a road trip could work, but it should always revolve around the situations that Greg gets him and his family into. In the trilogy, almost every bad situation that Greg finds himself in is caused because of his selfish actions. But in the long haul, you never feel like Greg deserves the bad things that happen to him, because he's just sitting in the back seat waiting for each situation to randomly come to him. For example, the reason why a crazy family starts harassing the Hefleys is because Greg goes outside of his motel room at night and sees a bunch of kids messing around with a cart, and after telling them to be quiet, the kids push the car to them, miss, then head into their dad's van, which they blame on Greg and ignites the conflict. Greg had barely any part in this. Now this is very similar to a scene in the first film, where some teenagers make fun of Riley's Halloween costume and sprays them with water, which makes Greg threaten to call the cops. This leads to a chase scene that ends up in the two hiding in Greg's grandma's house. Then when they come out with gardening supplies, he accidentally scrapes it against their car, damaging it, igniting the conflict throughout the film. Now while in concept these two scenes are very similar, there's one clear difference in them. In one, Greg is the one to escalate the situation, and in the other, he's just being reasonably upset. If this were in the original trilogy, it would have gone like this. Greg comes out to see a bunch of kids messing around and making noise. He starts telling them to be quiet in a rude and demeaning way. Something like, You little kids better stop making so much noise, or I'm gonna have to tell your parents which all the kids start continuously mocking him. This continues until Greg snaps and pushes a nearby car at them, which then messes and scrapes their dad's van. Like I said before, Greg should always be the one to escalate a situation. The only time they got this right was when Greg changed the GPS to take them to a gaming convention, because Greg became the viral star of an impact font meme, and thought that getting a picture with this Markiplier wannabe would make people respect him again. And yes, I'm a what the what mushroom in a kitchen? Boom, you got shrooms! That's how Digby do it! 
That's how Jigby do it. <laughs> Classic. The reason it almost works is because Greg escalates things to a point where his mother is screaming at him in front of his idol and millions of people, but it's then immediately ruined by no one caring about this humiliating situation. Rather, they cheer for him because, oh my god, it's Impact Font Boy. The humor should come from the audience cringing alongside Greg, but in this film there is no cringe to be found. Well, intentional cringe, that is. It's called cosplay, and there's a lot of it. Are those even real? Yeah, we're going there. The casting in this film is abysmal. Well, apart from Manny, he's alright. It's so jarring to see Greg, literally and figuratively, grow through each film to now be this dumb little kid again, except he's completely lost his hilarious sense of entitlement, and his personality's now boiled down to, oh, he likes to watch YouTube and play video games. Which reminds me, the originals could be seen as timeless, since they rarely ever focus on current trends or pop culture. But Long Haul is only two years old, and it already comes off as dated. Next we have the parents. I'm not gonna lie and say in the original Susan and Frank were some deep characters that stole the show. But their actors did such a great job at playing these two dorky parents that struggle to be strict but easygoing people. Frank has gone from this stern dad who tries his best to connect with his children, to a generic father who spends too much time focusing on work. Susan is about the same she's always been, but you can't top the acting level the original had. And do I even have to mention the amazing detail that these five looked like they could actually be a family? Like, they genuinely look as if they could be related, but these people... <sighs> I'm sorry, I know it's a meme, but this is seriously not my Roderick. In the original, Roderick was perfect. Plain and simple, nobody would have given a better performance. But they did not try at all with his character in this. I'm sorry, Devin Bostick. They forced you to make a reaction video where you tried to seem as supportive as possible, but I could see the hope in your eyes shatter once this monstrosity appeared on screen. Now here's a common misconception that people have about Roderick. Not even Jeff Kenny, who created the character and wrote this movie, seems to understand. Roderick is not dumb. He's been so flanderized over the years that it's what you would think. But in the original, Roderick was never supposed to be just a one-note idiot. He was a guy whose only aspiration in life was to be a successful musician, and so never sought out to strive at anything else, and would much rather act dumb to lower people's expectations of him, so he could go through life easy. In some ways, that actually makes him smart. He was an intimidating older brother, not this er-headed idiot, who acts more like a sidekick to Greg than an antagonist. And sure, by the third film of the original trilogy, Greg and Roger acted more like friends instead of rivals, but that was only because they spent the previous two films growing as characters and creating a bond. I'm going to kill you. Literally kill you. It really felt earned. I'm sure it's not the actor's fault. It's more than likely their poor performance is due to the terrible script. But I just can't defend any of them. Again, other than money. It does a good job. Speaking of the script, it's clear they had no kind of direction in mind, and so just combined random scenes from three of the books and shoved them together to try find some kind of narrative. The trilogy had plenty of scenes from the books, but they more often than not heavily deviated from them if they thought it would help the movie more, and I think that decision was for the best. And maybe it's just because the books in my opinion aren't that good anymore, but I'm struggling to find any real positives with this film. Like I said before, the intentional cringe comedy is gone for the most part, so it relies mostly on its standalone jokes, but they're so terribly unfunny, I would much rather have pointless gross art and pop culture references in place of jokes. Like with a completely out of place psycho part, why? Why is Greg in blackface? It's not even a good road trip movie. They thrive off the locations that the characters visit, and what wacky shenanigans they get into while there. But in the long haul, they only visit a couple notable places, and only stay there for a minute or two before going on to the next scene. So much of this film takes place in the car in between locations, it barely even feels like a road trip. In the end, most people just ended up glossing over this film as inoffensive or not that bad. But I'm here to say those people are idiots. I'm not gonna stand idly by and let this monster take what was once a collection of clever films that focus on the relationships and issues a child has while growing up, and turn it into just another generic family series full of toilet humour and pop culture references. Wait, is that Sonic? Never mind, this movie is perfect, I take back everything I said. It's sad that a generation of kids are gonna grow up with this movie, and not even know the originals existed, but at least the long haul flopped so hard that we're never gonna get another Diary of a Wimpy Kid movie to further tarnish the brand. Uh, Mark? Oh, how happy I am that I never have to witness another bastardization of one of my favourite childhood series. Uh, hey, Mark? Oh, how incredibly relieved I am that this heartless corporation shall never taint such an amazing franchise ever again. As if they did, it would greatly upset me. Mark! What? Oh no.